Hey everybody, it's Ben here and oh my God, what are we looking at? This looks like some sort of a crazy contraption. Uh, what it really is, is I'm bench testing a motor controller. Uh, if we look up on top, uh, this device right here is a home-built uh, DC electric motor controller. This is the Open Revolt. It was originally a group project uh, led by M. Paul Holmes on the ecomoder.com uh, fuel economy forum website. Uh, if we look underneath here, um, I did not build it. Um, I beta tested it. I also made this fancy enclosure and designed a logo and a t-shirt for it, but I really wasn't the electronics guy. Um, however, uh, this has been out of my electric geometro for a number of years now, but it is what I use to control this electric forklift motor. And what I'm doing is, since the geometro, that was an old project, it rusted out, I recycled the car but kept the, uh, the electrical components. So uh, that electric motor is going to go into a lawn tractor and I'm testing the motor controller. So what I've got is it is connected to a Nissan Leaf battery pack. Uh, this is six cells, it's uh, about 48 volts more or less. Um, I also have a couple other components down here including a 500 amp main fuse and a contactor. So these are the, the basic parts that I need for bench testing all of this. Uh, one thing that's also a little different on this controller versus some other controllers is that this uses uh, 12 volts for the logic circuits. A lot of other controllers use pack voltage. Uh, so to power up the motor controller, I'm instead going to use this uh, 12 volt power supply. Typically, uh, the car's 12 volt battery is actually what would power the logic board inside the motor controller. So what I'm gonna do is power on the bench power supply for my 12 volt power. There we go, we got 12 volts and up on the motor controller. We've got our green and yellow LEDs indicating that it is working properly, but power is not yet connected. Uh, what I need to do is pre-charge, um, which I can do with the resistor that I have down here at the contactor, and then I should be able to power it up. So I'm going to put the camera on a tripod, so I got my hands free, and we'll try it. So right now, the voltage difference between the, uh, the two connections on the contactor here is about 45 volts. So if I close that contactor, that 45 volts is just gonna surge into the motor controller, which is not good for the capacitors. So I have here a resistor, and if I essentially short this connection, but through the resistor, uh, essentially it's going to slow that current flow. And if we watch on the voltmeter, we're gonna see that voltage drop. Should take about 10 seconds total. Um, it drops pretty quick right away, but as the voltage difference drops, so does the current. Uh, the resistor, it, it, it's not even getting warm or anything. It's not a lot of power we're putting through here. Um, so essentially we have to pre-charge um, the capacitors in the motor controller. Now we're down to just millivolts difference. Um, so I could rig that up on a uh, momentary push button. I could also leave it permanently connected but have a just a separate battery disconnect which is probably what I'm going to do. So now um, if I apply power to the coil of the main contactor, the main contactor will snap shut. So I'll do that right over here. And then I don't have to hold that in place either uh, because now our circuit is complete going up to the motor controller and we have logic and we have power. Sitting on top of the motor controller is a Curtis PB6. This is a potentiometer which travels from zero to 5,000 ohms. It has a lever on here normally connected uh, to a, a, a throttle, so a cable to a, a gas pedal, for example. Um, and then the wires coming out of it are going to the motor controller and it's just a, a pair of wires and the difference in resistance between the two of those sends the signal to the logic board in here and then the motor controller spins up the motor. And again, I'm just bench testing. So at this point, I'm using nuts and bolts for connections on the battery into the main fuse, things like that. Um, but I'm just using jumper cables to go from the motor controller down to the motor 
Um, I do have that strapped down. Motors like this are big and powerful and they're round and they will spin and fall off cables and things if you don't have them strapped down. But I've got my jumper cables going there, 48 volts. Uh, I've got a jumper connecting the, um, the commutator connections to the, um, to the field connections. And right down here, uh, this is the sprocket which will power the tractor. So what I'm gonna do now is everything's on. I should be able to uh, lightly pull on that and spin the motor at variable speeds. Okay, here we go. I'm going to give a light pull on the Curtis PB6 potentiometer. Okay, I'm just barely touching the potentiometer. Sure enough, we got nice, nice low speed control. That's a higher speed. Of course, there's not really any load on this motor, so it can spin up pretty fast when there's uh, no resistance. Um, also, there's not too much friction on this, so it takes a little while to spin down. Um, I want to put some brakes on the tractor. But it looks like I've got pretty good speed control on the bottom end here. Um, I'm definitely going to need some gear reduction as uh, that thing can spin pretty darn fast. But it looks like bench testing works. Uh, now I got to do is bolt all this down inside the tractor.